Hello there everybody, boys and girls. Welcome back to ITTV. For today's lesson, let's look at transportation system in plants. Now, of course, transportation of substances in plants is pretty complex, but let's look at the learning outcomes for today. Firstly, we need to state the necessity for transport of substance in plants. By the end of this lesson, students must identify the vascular tissue in stem, root and leaf to state the role of vascular tissue in the transport of substances, to describe the structure of vascular tissue and students must be able to relate the structure of xylem to transport, to relate the structure of phloem to transport, to predict the effect of removing a ring of phloem tissues from a plant. So, now, like humans and animals, plants definitely need a form of transportation system, but they don't have blood, of course. Yeah? Plants need to have a flow of water and food throughout the plants. So they have two different um, transportation systems, one for water and one for food. Food meaning sugar, sucrose, amino acids. So let's look at the necessity for transport of substances in plants. We know that roots absorb water and mineral salts which are transported upward to leaves and all other parts of plants. Water is a vital component of cells as it acts as a solvent. It's often a reactant in cell metabolism. Okay? And mineral salts are also needed for synthesis of chlorophyll for growth and development of the plant. So, uh, besides that, Products of photosynthesis produced by leaves are transported to stems and roots for respiration, growth and storage. So, let's look at a special type of plants known as the liverworts. They are small, multicellular plants. They have thin, flat bodies providing large total surface area to volume ratio and short distance for diffusion of substances. So, as you can see, um, an internal transport system is not a necessity for these kind of very simple, small, multicellular plants. But how about the larger plants? For example, angiosperms, conifers and ferns. The total surface area to volume ratio is smaller and there's a larger distance for diffusion of substances. So plants transport substances by an internal system consisting of tubes. So as you can see, for larger plants, you would need a very systematic transportation system compared to the, to the simple um, plants, for example, um, liverworts, which have a very high surface area to volume ratio. So substances can just diffuse very easily. But for large trees, you know, like those um, you know, fern trees and so on, they definitely need a more complex internal transportation system. As we know, plant cells require less energy compared to animal cells as plants are less active. Therefore, plant's transport system is less complex and slower compared to the animal's blood circulatory system. Now, because plants don't move, so naturally they don't need a lot of energy. So therefore, the plant's transport system is naturally less complex. Now let's look at vascular tissues in stems, roots and leaves. There are two main vascular tissues, would be the xylem, that provides support and transports water and mineral salts upward against gravitational pull from roots to the stems and leaves. The second vascular tissue would be the phloem. It transports organic substances such as sucrose from leaf synthesis during photosynthesis to other parts of the plant. So they just have two vascular tissues which would be the xylem for transportation of water, phloem for transportation of organic substances.
Both asylum and flow may not engage in transportation of oxygen and CO2. Transportation of these gases happens by diffusion between cell and environment. So, you see, plants, unlike animals and us humans, they don't need um, a respiratory system like lungs or gills or amphibians. They need lungs as well. But for plants, you know, um, exchange of gases just happens between the cells and the environment through a process called diffusion. Now, if you refer to the diagram, this is a picture of the vascular tissues in stems, right? Um, actually, this is a cross section of a leaf, and you notice at the corner there is a picture of a phloem and the xylem. So then you notice that uh, a cross section of the part that contains phloem and the xylem, you can see there's the primary xylem and the primary phloem. So, structure of xylem. Besides transporting water and mineral salts, xylem also gives mechanical support to the plants. And xylem further comprises of three types of cells, known as the vessels, tracheids, and the parenchyma. And um, if you refer to the diagram, this is a picture of a tracheid and vessels, which comprise of the xylem. Now, how do xylem vessels look like? Because it's mentioned that xylem comprises of three types of cells. One of them will be the vessels. Now, vessels, as you can refer to the diagram, they're long, hollow, and arranged from end to end, which allows water to flow in a continuous column. Cell walls are lignified to provide mechanical support as well as to prevent collapse of the vessels. So xylems are there for mechanical support as well as transportation of water and mineral salts. So just now I just described a, you know, about the xylem vessels which are arranged from one end to one end to allow a continuous flow of the water. Now. As you can see, xylem vessels consist of dead cells. The cells are not alive. And that is why there is an absence of protoplasm that provide an uninterrupted flow of water up the plant. Some plants, such as conifers and ferns, they do not have xylem vessels, but they have, they have tracheids. So basically, as you can see, um, the vessels are consisting of dead cells. So they actually have no, um, no um, cytoplasm or nucleus at all. So that's why it's like a hollow tube. So water can just flow continuously. If we move on to tracheids, tracheids are less efficient in water conduction as there are no open ends to form continuous water flow in a hollow tube. So water has to pass through pits from one cell to another. If you refer to the diagram, it's a picture of a tracheid. That the tracheids basically um, have holes, they're very holy. So water doesn't just flow through in one continuous column like a, like a pipe, like a tube, like vessels. But tracheids, they have holes and that's how water has to flow through the holes, you know, through the pits from one cell to another. Moving on, so we finished the structure of xylem, which is consisting of the vessels, tracheids, and parenchyma, but I didn't dwell too much on parenchyma cells. Now let's move on to phloem. As you can see in the diagram, there is a very nice structure of the phloem, where it consists of a sieve tube members, companion cells which contain nucleus. And at the end of the sieve tube, you have a sieve plate, and that's the longitudinal view. And that on the right hand side is the transverse section of a sieve tube member, companion cell, and a sieve plate. So, phloem transports organic substances such as sucrose and amino acids from the leaves to other parts of the plants. Phloem comprises of sieve tubes and companion cells. So, for phloem, it's simple only two things the sieve tube and companion cells. So you might wonder why do phloems need companion cells? So let's look at a sieve tube. Now a sieve tube is a cylindrical column of sieve cells joined end to end to facilitate the longitudinal flow of the organic substances. Cross walls of each sieve element are perforated by pores forming sieve plates that aids 
transport materials from one sieve to another. And all the organelles are degenerated, including nucleus. There's a thin layer of cytoplasm which lines the thin cellulose wall of sieve tube for rapid flow of liquid. So as you can see, the sieve tubes, they're not dead cells, not like the vessels. The vessels are dead cells. The sieve tubes, they are still alive, but all the organelles are degenerated and they have a very thin layer of cytoplasm, so it's easier for the organic substances to move longitudinally from the leaves to different parts of the plants. So we look at companion cells. They are only found in angiosperms and they're located next to and closely associated with the sieve tube cells. Companion cells have nucleus, dense cytoplasm and many mitochondria. They aid in transportation of food such as sucrose and amino acids from leaf cells into sieve tubes. So if you look at the picture, all right, um, it's an even easier picture for for you all to understand. Maybe I'll just draw for you on the board, okay? So to help in your understanding, let me draw for you a sieve cell, okay? So of course, it's just like a plant cell, so it would have the cell wall, right? It would have the cell wall surrounding it. Now, and there are actually structures known as plasmodesmata. Plasmodesmata would actually link up to another, perhaps I draw with a different, uh, different coloured chalk. So these will be known as a sieve plate, sieve plate, okay, um, belonging to another sieve cell, okay. So this will be the sieve plate. And just like in the kitchen, you have a sieve, right? So a sieve will be having a lot of holes. Sieve would have holes, okay? And of course, naturally, this will have also the cell wall. Okay, cell wall. Okay, I hope that you can uh, have a good understanding of this. Now, this is known as a sieve tube member like one of the cells sieve tube cell it's very thin cytoplasm lining the cell wall to you know to facilitate the movement of the organic substances now so this is the sieve plate all right and all the organelles are degenerated to you know um, to facilitate the movement what is very nice will be the will be the presence of something called the companion cell. Now, companion cells are also plant cells, of course. So that's why I draw, I draw the cell wall. Okay. So this will be the cell wall of the of the companion cell. Okay. And then, of course, this will be the nucleus. Okay. So this here, everybody will be the companion cell companion cell it accompanies it is closely associ associated with the sieve tube cell and even here also there could be a plasmodesmata just like all this okay so this could be also a plasmodesmata now the companion cells are rich with organelles. They have dense cytoplasm. They've got a lot of mitochondria. You know, a lot of mitochondria. That means um, basically these companion cells, they need a lot of energy in the form of ATP. So companion cells actually help to transport, help to transport um, sucrose from, from basically the leaf cell into the, into the sieve member cell so that so that sucrose can easily move through so arrow will be the movement of sucrose 
from the leaf cells. Um, you know, sucrose are generated through photosynthesis. It will be transported to the companion cells, and the companion cells will just transport the sucrose into the sieve tube cells, which just flows down to the roots and other parts of the plant. So really, companion cells are really wonderfully associated with the sieve tube um, member cells and both of them, they comprise part of the phloem tissue. So I hope that you have an understanding of how the sieve tubes and the companion cells work together in the transportation of organic substances from the leaves to other parts of the plants. Now, let us move on to um, some test questions. Okay, let's look at the first question. Vascular tissue of plants consists of dash, firstly cortex, two xylem, three epidermis, four phloem. So I'll carefully look at the options and I'm sure you can get the answer. So what is your answer? Yes, you're right. The answer is C, which would be xylem and phloem because we're talking about vascular tissue. Vascular tissue is for transportation and it's only two things, xylem and phloem tissue. Well done if you got C. Okay, next question. Which of these match is correct? A, xylem, C, plate. B, xylem, companion cell. C phloem, C tube, D phloem, tracheates. Now, why don't you just think about this answer? I'm sure you can get it. Now, for this one, it's a bit of memory and recall, right? Now, xylem was never with C plate, that's for phloem. We're running through the options. B, Xylem and companion cell. No companion cell was always with the phloem. C. Phloem and sieve tube. Hmm, this is correct. Yes, you're right. Well done if you chose option C. Phloem sieve tube. Because option D, phloem doesn't go with tracheids. Tracheids are part of the xylem tissue. So the answer is C. Now let's look at this question. Which of these is false about the description of sieve tube? A. Presence of all the organelles. B. Cylindrical column of C cells joined end to end. C. C. Few elements are perforated by pores. D. Tin cellulose wall. So, now I think you can very fast answer this question. Yes, you're right, which is false. We know that sieve tube cells do not have organelles. So it's false if the option says presence of all the organelles because the organelles are actually all degenerated. They have a thin um, cytoplasm, thin cellulose wall. They are cylindrical column of sieve cells joined end to end and they're perforated by pores. That's certainly true. Now, let's look at some structure and essay questions. Describe the structure, function and properties of sieve tube. Now, if you are faced with this question in the exams, what are the keywords that you will write? What would you say? Ah, I can see that um, you're really thinking about it. Now, this one has three parts to it. Structure, function and properties. So, you need to answer three parts for this question. Firstly, structure. The sieve tube is a cylindrical column of sieve cells joined end to end to facilitate the longitudinal flow of the organic substances such as sucrose. Now, what else? Function. So we talk about the function of the sieve tube. Cross walls of each sieve tube element are perforated by pores, forming sieve plates that aid transport materials from one sieve to another. And properties, last, last part of this question. Make sure you don't leave out any part. 
properties of sieve tubes. All the organelles in the mature sieve tubes are degenerated, including the nucleus. And the thin layer of cytoplasm lines the thin cellulose wall of sieve tube for rapid flow, so it's easier. So no organelles, even nucleus, only thin cytoplasm and thin cellulose for fast movement of the liquid. Okay, let's look at another question. Describe the structure of xylem and the components involved in it. Now, this is quite a popular essay question, so do make sure that you do study thoroughly this part. Okay, yes, I'm sure that you would have a rough idea how to answer it. Um, okay, let's look at the key points that you should have in your answer. Firstly, xylem transports water and mineral salts from roots to other parts of plants and also gives mechanical support to plants. Must be there. Xylem comprises of three types of cells, which are vessels, tracheids, and parenchyma. So you're talking about the structure and the components. Next, xylem vessels are long, hollow, and arranged from end to end, which allows water to flow in a continuous column. Cell walls of xylem vessels are lignified to provide mechanical support, as well as to prevent collapse of the vessels. Xylem vessels consist of dead cells. Absence of protoplasm provide an uninterrupted flow of water up the plant. Some plants, such as conifers and ferns, do not have xylem vessels but have tracheids. Tracheids are less efficient in water conduction as there are no open ends to form continuous water flow in hollow tube. So water has to pass through pits from one end to another. So this succinctly describes the structure of xylem and the components in great detail. If you have all those um, um, key points as that, I'm sure you'll do very well in the exam. Well, thank you so much for um, you know watching ITTV. We look forward to see you again next time. Do study thoroughly the transportation system of plants and you'll ace it. We look forward to see you again another day. Thank you.